What's going on, everyone? Happy Monday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, a flu test, or a test for any of the viruses out there, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long-term issues and no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Monday edition of the Pandemic Update for Monday, March 11th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and other viruses that could be a health threat to you. Want to keep yourself informed and safe? Subscribe to my channel down below. Like what you see on today's videos or other videos? Give them a thumbs up by hitting that thumbs up button down below. And of course, share these videos with anyone you know. All right, a quick few notes before we start today's update. I'm back on camera today. Yes, we got the camera fixed. Turns out a simple reboot of the computer was all that was needed to fix that issue yesterday. Second of all, you may hear some background noise today. Not much I can do about it. Going to try my best to not uh, talk over it, but it is extremely windy. Anyone who is in the Northeast right now knows we are dealing with some extreme winds. Winds gusting over 50 miles per hour, so that wind is howling outside. Hopefully it doesn't disrupt today's pandemic update, but we'll make the best we can do with. All right, starting off today with Canada news. Yes, there is news out of another exposure of measles. Health unit lists potential measles exposure location after case confirmed in London, Ontario. That's right, there may potentially be cases now spreading, more cases spreading in London, Ontario. And one of those exposures was on Sunday, March 3rd, 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. at True Taco Restaurant at the Western Fair District Market on 900 King Street. And then Fanshawe College Wellness and Fitness Center, 1001 Fanshawe College Boulevard. There were a few um, potential exposures there. And the list goes on. If you want to read this full list, I will either tweet this out or retweet someone else who did tweet this out. See, there goes that wind again. All right, moving on now to this. New Zealand, they update each week. COVID-19 update in New Zealand. 4,803 new cases and 24 new deaths have been reported there today. And it says 3,118 were reinfections. It also says they currently have, uh, there were 171 cases in the hospital at this time so yes they are still dealing with a good number of cases over in new zealand now for the united states weekly COVID update from bno news and it says new cases 146,588. the average is now down by 22,000 to 181,978. states reporting 50 out of 50 in the hospital 14,785. that's down by 1,000. in the icu and this number actually went up a little bit. Yikes, that's not good. 1,845 new deaths. 1,658. Let's enter that into our calculator. 1,658. You'll see why in a moment. Average is 1,672. That's down by 161. But overall, this is not a big uh, drop in deaths. So deaths are continuing to remain elevated. The breakdown for this week's case numbers, 22 states reported 76,976 cases the estimate comes from 28 states which makes 69,612 total new cases 146,588 and this is just reported an estimate this doesn't even include what wastewater says there could be but hey this total is down 16 percent from last week cases and hospitalizations remain elevated across the u.s but have steadily declined during the past few weeks deaths remain elevated from this winter's peak and they should also add, well, they don't, but they still remain elevated from last summer's wave as well. They have not gone below 1,000 in a very long time. I'm sure they'll talk about that. During the past week, 15,141 Americans were hospitalized with COVID, down 13% from the week before. Close to 15,000 people currently are hospitalized. So far this year, more than 2.5 million cases of COVID have been reported in the U.S., causing 209,000 hospitalizations and nearly 21,000 deaths. Let's click on their page again. I want to see if they talk about how many deaths there have been so far since last term. No, they don't do that this week. That's okay. Moving on now. 
Remember, those COVID deaths, they were 1,658. We have to add to that number. Influenza update. New cases. They're saying 2 million still. Wow, that's a lot of cases. The average is 1.5 million. Hospital admissions, 20,000. New deaths, 2,000. Let's add that. So just from COVID and influenza, another 3,658 deaths just in the past week. Now, could I have added that up in my head? Sure, I could have. It makes it more fun. This It makes it more interesting this way. And well, I shouldn't say the word fun. That's that, that was a poor choice of words, but you get the idea here. 3,658 deaths still in one week just from COVID and flu. That is totally unacceptable. We need to do better. We need to get these numbers down. And it shouldn't be getting these numbers down it's because cases are uh, naturally dropping. No, we should be preventing this on our own. We should be taking the steps to preventing these levels from being so darn high. Let's read on. There's more about the flu. Seasonal flu remains elevated in a large part of the U.S., except in the Northwest, where flu levels are low. And yes, that's true. We looked at the flu update the other day, and we'll take a look at that today, I think. Um, the levels in the Northwest are not doing all that bad. Nationwide cases and hospital admissions are mostly stable, though increasing in some areas, and that is true. Ohio is still stubbornly high. The CDC estimates that so far this season, 28 million people have been infected with influenza, causing 310,000 hospitalizations and 20,000 deaths, including 103 children now. Yikes, so that number did go over 100. We thought it would. Personally, I do know someone right now who is dealing with influenza. So, yeah, influenza is also a big problem, as well as COVID. All right, we have to go back in time today. I want to go back to 2020. Take a look at this. March 11th, 2020, on this day in COVID history. I know we have not done this in a while, and I, quite frankly, I stopped doing it, but from time to time, we're going to do this again. Today, because today was a big day in COVID history. On March 11th of 2020, after more than 118,000 cases in 114 countries and 4,291 deaths, the WHO declared COVID-19 a pandemic. That's right. Four years ago today, COVID became a pandemic, and here we are. They're not calling it a pandemic anymore, but let's be honest, it still is a pandemic. And then you come to uh, 2021, it was the first anniversary, and second, third, you get the idea here. COVID became a pandemic on this day in 2020, and shortly after everything started to shut down, you know what happened next. All right, let's take a look at the air qualities across the United States, and really not all that bad for many people which includes the Northeast. It is, again, it's extremely windy in the Northeast. If you're hearing the wind in the background of this update, I really do apologize. Uh, slight air quality problems in the West Coast. You know, the typical spots. It's still fireplace season. And when it's not fireplace season, it will once again become wildfire season. So it's a never-ending problem out there. Some minor air quality issues ongoing in Wisconsin, Minneapolis, even in Michigan. Not certain what that's all about. Again, it's just minor, although there is one site there that is reading 100, and that's not good to see at this time. All right, moving on now, taking a look at Philadelphia EMS calls for Sunday, March 10th. It was 700 EMS calls, and hey, that, that's good. That is a lower number. It's not below 700, but hey, that's a better number, and we're not seeing that number anywhere near the 800 level, which I consider to be concerning. And now let's take a look at what is going on in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, and ooh, I'm seeing a lot of calls that say emergency on them. Respiratory emergency, cardiac emergency, respiratory emergency, cardiac emergency, respiratory emergency, another cardiac emergency. You get the idea. Yeah, there's a lot of emergencies going on in Montgomery County right now. Uh, Chester County, Pennsylvania, is seeing stroke, sick person, stroke, and heart problems at this time, which that is not good to see. Let's now take a look at the latest Walgreens update. And unfortunately, testing at Walgreens continues to drop. And take a look at this. Apparently, because of that, it's now causing a lot of states' positivity to start to go up. It's not terribly concerning because, again, testing is just so minimal at Walgreens. Let me explain. 14.2% positivity this week. The prior week was 14%. That's a difference of up 0.2%. Total test, 1,973. Yeah, I know. Just a few weeks ago, some states, such as Texas or Florida, that was the total number of tests for the entire state, let alone 
We're now seeing that be the total number for the United States. Prior week was 2,567. Let's just do a couple states. I don't even know if it's worth it. Uh, New York State, 27.5% this week. Prior week was 11.9%. Up 15.5%. Just 51 tests for the entire state of New York versus 67. Let's come down to Texas, which once did see a high number of tests. 16.8% positivity this week, 14.3% last week. That's a difference of up 2.5%. Total test, 394 versus 491. But despite this huge decrease in testing, some states, such as California, which is a major state, is seeing a drop in the positivity rate. 9.1% versus 15%. Hey, that's down 5.9%. Just 11 tests for a state that has millions of people. Yeah, totally ridiculous. 11 versus 20. You get the idea here. It's, it's just not enough testing. We'll take a look at some more Walgreens states tomorrow. I do want to take a look at Biobot. I don't think there's an update from Biobot yet. But, hey, let's take a look at their levels as well. You can see Biobot here. The wastewater continues to drop in the United States. And you can see all regions are dropping at this time with exceptions to the Midwest. The Midwest is not seeing a drop at this time. In fact, it went up ever so slightly in the past week. All right, continuing on now, let's go to where we left off yesterday. We were taking a look at some wastewater sites, and we were down to around the area of Coralville, Iowa, and we do want to continue with the Midwest today. How about we take a look at what is going on in northern Indiana? We're just going to do a few wastewater sites here and take a look at northern Indiana. We do see something rather interesting. The COVID levels are dropping. They're medium at this time. That's what they're being reported. But when we take a look at wastewater for RSV, you can see here. It rose a little bit on the most recent update. We also see influenza A slightly starting to rise. Influenza B is seeing a little bit more of a significant rise at this time. Norovirus is dropping ever so slightly. And pox, no issues at this time. Now we want to make our way a little bit more to the south. And let's see what's going on in Louisville, Kentucky area. Always interesting to check out here because they only have two wastewater sites for the entire state of Kentucky, at least on wastewater scan. There may be more on the CDC page. Louisville, Kentucky for COVID, medium and dropping at this time. RSV did have an ever so slight rise to begin this month, and that looks to be maybe stabilizing a little bit. We'll have to wait and see what the next update shows. Influenza A is dropping. Influenza B is slightly elevated at this time. And norovirus was rising. Now it's dropped a little bit on the most recent update. And coming down here to hepatitis A, there were some detections of that. And no detections of MPOX at this time. Now let's come down to Georgia. Let's see what's going on in the Atlanta area. We'll do a wastewater site that we have not done. I don't know that we've ever done this one before. Johns Creek in Roswell, Georgia. 84,000 population. COVID overall trajectory is downward. RSV down. Influenza A down. Influenza B down. And norovirus has leveled off. It is starting to drop a little bit at this time. And we can see here there are some detections of hepatitis A. No MPOX detections at this time. Now let's go out to the West Coast. And let's see what's going on. How about we go up to the... Let's see. How about we go up to Sacramento? That's where I was thinking. And let's see what's going on there. Sacramento at this time. COVID levels are low. It's coming up with medium RSV, but quite frankly, that's similar to the levels that are being shown for COVID, if not lower than the levels being shown for COVID. Influenza has really dropped at this time for influenza A, slightly rising for influenza B. Again, in this case, we are ignoring where it says high because that is not high at all on the chart. Mpox, there have been a few detections of it back in February. And hepatitis A at this time. Yep, there have been some detections of that as well. Let's quickly, just real briefly, go over to the CDC website. I do want to show you the uh, Pacific Northwest. And you can see here, on some of these wastewater sites in the Pacific Northwest, like Oregon, for example. Oregon, you're just seeing one orange site for the entire state. And that is in Lincoln, Oregon at this time. Can't really, the chart here is getting chopped off for some reason. But you can see there, that one is rising. The rest of the state is doing fine. And take a look at Washington, a few moderate sites still in Spokane, Washington, and the Seattle, Washington area. But again, for the most part, Washington's not doing all that bad either. All right, let's take a look at this week's flu update. And you can see there, Ohio, very high. 
Nebraska is still very high, but look at the Pacific Northwest. You're doing fantastic for flu at this time. Minimal to low flu levels. The eastern half of the United States, east of the Rocky Mountains, still a lot of very high, high, or moderate levels to be reported, and I think that's going to continue for some time. Uh, very high levels in Washington, D.C., and still high levels in New York City as well. All right, last two things we're going to take a look at today. New Jersey. Only 60 out of 70 hospitals reported. That results in 450 hospitalizations, 22 people on a ventilator, in the ICU, 49, 56 discharges. Again, 10 hospitals did not report. Usually we will see more hospitals report there on Tuesday. Taking a look now at New York City, or New York State, I should say, and I do have to refresh this. Just 670 new cases. That's a fantastic number. Let's see what's going on in New York State with the hospitalization situation at this time. And we can see here for hospitalizations in New York State, they have reported 828 hospitalizations and 87 people in the ICU. This number continues to steadily decline. We'll have to see, Kim, before the end of the March, we get New York State below 500 hospitalizations. That would be fantastic. Last year, they bottomed out in the 400s. And as a matter of fact, no, they did get down to last year, just before 4th of July, they got down to 300. And 90 or 388 hospitalizations so yes we'll have to see here i like to see new york state get even lower than that this year Alrighty, folks that does it for today's pandemic update i know the wind is going absolutely bonkers behind me right now if you want to uh, follow me on twitter you can do that by going to at covid data report Thanks for watching. We will have another pandemic update again tomorrow. If you like this update, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel down below if you want to continue to stay informed. And if you want to help other people stay informed, by all means, share these videos with anyone you know. And if you want to help support my work here on my channel or anything I do, there's ways to do that listed down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again tomorrow. Until I see you again tomorrow, have a fantastic Monday afternoon and stay safe, everyone.